<clears throat> okay, we're going to talk uh, slip form septic tank and uh, cistern and fish tank and a bunch of other things. I'll use the same forms, just use them over and over again. Uh, they sent us some pictures uh, so we could count how many we had of each size, just to find out if we had enough, because we want to pour a whole ring with no seams in it. And we were just verifying, so they sent us a picture of, uh, these are eight foot forms. It's sitting on the uh, floor of the house, the living area floor. And uh, this is our uh, workbench uh, that Benji Boy uh, has for making uh, ornamental iron. They work on our property, uh, rent free, <laughs> electric free. Uh, and you can see, see back here in the background, there's a window with a uh, an orchid in it. It's one of theirs. They did 174 pieces of ornamental iron for this property. Uh, these are some uh, two different sizes, actually. That makes a 90 degree corner. We use them all the time. I don't know. I don't know where they are. Huh. Uh, this is stuff for the procession carriage. Somehow it's must have been going on at the same time. Yeah, they, they built us a new procession carriage top. Um, this is uh, notable for this board here. You see there's notches on the edge of the board, one side and the other. They're differently spaced. There's also notches on one of the wide faces. It's two by three cocoa lumber. They made a tripod here to hoist dirt out of this hole, uh, which was about... Uh, over seven feet of washing after we uh, dug it and put the floor down here, the uh, concrete floor, it uh, filled right back in. Can we zoom that? Of course not. That's a different kind of thing. Um, in any event, these notch boards, uh, that's how we, uh, we measure our rebars. We have like four or five different patterns. These ones here were used to make... Uh, um, 14 by 24 inch beams, tie beams. Uh, it's all calculated so it's actually correct. Uh, that's Elijah. Uh, we were, uh, we started taking this dirt out here with a pulley and a tripod and a bucket. And it was slow. And I was afraid he'd get tired of it and quit. That's, that's, their, that's more of their tripod. Uh, and dirt kept falling in on them. So what they decided to do was dig down to the concrete all the way around the edge. And the dirt they took out, they put in uh, cement bags, 600 bags. Uh, but they're cheap. They're like three, three pesos a piece, six cents. But they did that. Uh, and I don't know if you can see it here. Well, we're gonna we're gonna move on, and we'll, we'll catch what I want in a minute. And it's just some more. Uh, what they needed to do was to dig to the edge of the concrete, because uh, you have to have space to walk around to, to bolt the forms and unbolt them. Um, they like this corner. That's another picture of the same corner. That's before the uh, they sandbagged that corner. Uh, this is another corner. They haven't found the concrete yet, but they put a uh, one of those uh, shipping tarps over top of it to take some of the... You got to remember how, how hot it is over there right now. It's terrible. This is a hillside on the other side. Uh, and, and some of this, this may be actually down in the hole. This dirt down in the hole is seven feet uh, deep. You can see how tall the cistern is because the uh, the top of it up here. I don't know if you can see this pointer moving. That's the uh, here it is. That's the edge of the gutter around the house. That collects all the water that falls on the building or against the walls of the building and sends it around over here and comes into the cistern tank. Sort of. To, uh, well, you haven't got that symbol. That's part of the camera. Hmm. And what we got going here. Okay, they they uh, started sandbagging the back wall. This is going away from the house. The house is to the right. 
And uh, obviously they've got about uh, eight or nine feet deep of dirt to dig here because you see there's some concrete over here on the right. And uh, they haven't got to that yet on the left. It's that far down. This is a lot of dirt to move. We're still moving it. They, that's where they found one corner of the concrete. They found the opposite corner, pretty much. Okay. That was our foreman. He's saying, all this crap got to go? Yeah, sure does. He's leveling a place off that he can sandbag above it. And you'll see that later on. Uh -huh. it's, it's obviously, it's pretty close to the house. You know, it's showing up in the pictures. Uh, I don't know. I guess uh, uh, they were taking the dirt out in the bags and then dumping it. We changed that. Uh, they were still sandbagging. Now, what you're looking here on the right, this is inside of the cistern. The dirt has, has washed in from the field and stuff around it that deep uh, during rainy season. And this is some hard digging dirt. The water can cut it right down and make a mess, but when you dig it with a, a, with a beretta and a shovel and, and stuff like that, it's some terrible tough stuff. Nothing wants to grow in it but some weeds and rice. Rice will grow in it. <laughs> Here's a sandbag on the back wall. And you can see there's a form up at the top up here. That form's four feet tall. A half a sheet of plywood, that one. So we have to get all the dirt down across that whole tank down to this size. Eventually. Some more sandbagging. And uh, you see the notch board just from the uh, the pulley and stuff that they had started out with. Okay, we've got one uh, wall parallel to the house dug up. And then it starts here at uh, four or five feet in, and it goes up 12 feet of dirt. All got to go away. And we just, we've just we seen sandbags. <laughs> looks, looks like we're building a bag of house. Uh, it doesn't look like it's very deep right here. But you're going to find out in a couple of minutes that that's about eight feet deep right there. It's a drop off. They dug it with a mattock. Uh, they were trying to show us how much they had to dig yet. Uh, need to stand farther back. And uh, here's our excavation crew. Obviously, the, the plastic tarp that they're standing under is nowhere near the top of the dirt. Um, I mean, the amount they got to, to dig. Uh, this some more of an indigenous grass, more grass. Uh, here they're a third of the way across it. More of the sand or dirt bag house. You don't see this guy sitting down room. He's the foreman. I guess he stopped for somebody to take a picture. But um, he also runs the bakery. You know, it's in the house. Uh, this is his daughter's room in the house. I imagine they were, were trying to figure out how the camera worked and just pushed the button. Because it has nothing to do with what we're doing. Okay, this is this is my revelation. You know, um, I said, we're not going to get done with this by rainy season. But we need to get the bottom ring of uh, these slip form concretes done before rainy season. We can we can do the second and third lifts any time of the year. Put some tarps up and uh, pump the water out. Let the, the dirt come in if it wants to. But we won't have to dig any more uh, dirt if we get that bottom ring. All we have to do is keep ahead of it how fast it washes the mud back in. And this hillside up here uh, all has to go away. I mean, that's, the top of our tank is up above the, the picture here. So, and you can see that, uh, that's Benji. He's uh, about five foot two, thereabouts. Sort of medium height for our crew. Uh, this is a, a ladder they made uh, down here in the corner. Um, that might be Al, looks like Al. Uh, and they use this to pour it too uh, later. Um, 
Okay, my revelation was, because we're not going to get it done in time, just dig straight down and uh, don't worry about the dirt in the center. So some of the dirt in the center has been thrown from around the outside. So now it's about 12 feet deep in the center. And some of it they, they threw up over top and landed on top of the sandbags. But the idea was get down uh, to what you can't see here. There's not enough definition in the picture. Um, we're going to find it, though. This is making sure they had a picture, I guess. Or showed who was at work that day. Okay. We're starting to think forms now. The form will be sitting outside of these rebars that you see here. That's the, the, the bottom is the center of the wall. The reason they're pointed the wrong way is because they're tied to rebars in the floor. There's an 8-inch concrete floor there with rebars, uh, 8 inches on the center, like number 16 rebar. And uh, 16 millimeter, rather, would be number 5. Um, anyway, they got the one form down there. And when, and when they shove it over to three inches away from that, they're going to take these things and turn them to where they won't be up against the concrete. We have to have two inches of concrete cover between the uh, bar and the form, and we got uh, three and a quarter. So that's if it was done perfect. We're just trying to do it. We're not worried about perfect. The, board, the rebars are all set by those notch boards, so they're exactly on the right dimensions, which was really easy to do. We've used that on the entire house build, one end to the other. Uh, okay, these are uh, number 12 bars. They uh, are the horizontal bars. And uh, they're on a sorted... Okay, here's a picture of it. The most stress on the uh, concrete is near the edge of the concrete. It's like tearing paper. Tear the edge, you can tear the whole piece. If you can't tear the edge, you're never going to tear the center. So we have a... a this is done on the house, too. All the house walls are done the same way. You have one that's three inches off the concrete, another three, and then about a four. Then these go to ten inches on the center. Up here, you, where you have four in a row, two of them are going to be in the top edge of the first uh, pour. And then when the forms slip up, bottom hole goes to the top hole when you pour it again. Bulks right through the, the wall you've already poured. So the, the setup on the second one is half a day. Uh, to get ready to pour. It takes longer to fill the bags by far than, than setting the forms. And take them down in a half a day. There's nothing to it. Anyway, we're going to have two in the bottom and two in the top. So this is sort of the the end of the first pour. Uh, these were done with uh, notch boards left to right. And then we have another set of notch boards that are uh, a little over four feet. And uh, that sets these, these heights here. So you put one set of boards down and throw the horizontal bars on it. And then you, uh, the vertical bars, and then you put the horizontals down. And you use the, the second notch board from the top side. And when they get done, they're going to pick, pick this up a little bit, pull those out, and just slide it down into place. Uh, normally, we, we pour, uh, make the rebars up out on the grass someplace. Um, and this is not that heavy. Uh, me and one guy my size can carry this right away. I built a concrete house before and uh, uh, number five, 16 millimeter bars. Uh, when I built the house, I carried, uh, uh, carried them seven at a time up uh, a ramp and then tied them all on the, on, the, on the concrete. So I know I can pick up seven and walk around with them. And I'm, you know, 80 years old. But they want to do them there. They're doing a the job. Fine by me. Oh, I think he's trying to show here that they uh, they have the short... This is only about four feet long, this this tongue. And they have them tied together up there. Uh, because those have to have ties, bars tied to them going from the front to the back. This is just so there's no uh, bar ends in a corner. We want, uh, we want a, a pretty good overlap. So there's about a two and a half foot overlap on all these bars. And this uh, part uh, to the left here, that's going to have these kind of bars put on it. It's going to continue but because you're, you're using the bottom bolt hole in the top hole of, of the first concrete. That's the, the spacers where you, uh, 
um, they, they determine the thickness of the wall. If you have the two forms, you got a piece of uh, PVC pipe, and threaded rod to run through the whole mess. And however long you make that uh, PVC pipe is how thick your walls are. Uh, we use seven inches because we have some fairly long spans in the neighborhood of 20 feet and sometimes more with no column, you know, because the, the whole wall is a column. You, you don't have that much uh, rebar in a column, you know, per, per cubic meter of concrete. Um, Texas Filipinos built this house out of uh, four inch thick uh, walls, uh, slip forms. Uh, we copied the forms from him. I, I used a different kind of form on the main part of the house. They were heavy, uh, they were slower. Um, but we were pouring uh, 10 feet, one and five thirty seconds deep, top to bottom. Never had a problem with the forms. Well, much of anything, it went right along. It's easier than it sounded like it would be. Anyway, this picture is showing that they got a loop, of, a rope or something around the top to keep them from, from just flopping straight down, hanging up on everything. That's Al and Benji. Hmm. I'm not sure who the third one is. Tissoy, I think, but what, I'm not sure. Uh, that's Nanny. That's probably who it was in the last picture. He's one of the brothers with uh, Boyette, the foreman. Boy from Benji Boy Construction. Uh, Benji was in the last picture. He's from Benji Boy Construction. They do uh, welding. A lot of welding. Yeah. He wears that, that, that brim hat. It's at least three years old. I don't know how long. Uh, he's been wearing it on our site about four or five years. Maybe so it's probably that old. Yeah. That's uh, back to showing the same guy. Okay, they've... Uh, They've stood uh, a long wall up here on the left, and uh, that's our uh, uh, lovely ladder. <laughs> that's not a death trap, but it's close. It wouldn't take much for me to make it disappear. It's just it's better than something they would come up with. And we were short of money uh, for a while there, and we just kept patching on it and, and putting bolts in it and angle iron on it. And it weighed, There's a piece of inch and a half angle iron on, on each of these legs. So it's pretty well reinforced, but it's heavy as whatever. Anyway, the rebar goes in first. It gets tied to the rebar that comes out of the concrete. One, two, three places. And uh, and then it overlaps. Uh, as you can see, there's 20, of an, 20 inches of the overlap shown in the picture. So this is a... Huh. Back wall. Um... Anyway, that's what the rebar looks like before you put the forms up. Uh, there's a long wall of rebar. It's uh, uh, probably spliced in the middle. I don't see any splices. That must have... Uh, must be those end pieces are long enough. Did you see how much dirt's got to go away yet above it? I mean, you're not even seeing a daylight anywhere above it. They they sent this to tell us that uh, we had a gap between the forms down here at the bottom, between the, this corner form and that form. And they also had an overlap on one of the short walls of a foot. So that's when we found out that the drawings that the guy uh, measured where those rebars come out of the floor, uh, he can't uh, translate numbers. <laughs> at least not numbers bigger than 10. Uh so uh, we basically took uh, just about four feet off of this length here, and then the forms went right together. Also, this one and and this one up here were swapped. That was the foot overlap. This 83-inch form is part of the dirty kitchen set. All of them go in this hole, but some of them go in other, other pores once we all get all this dirt out of here. Anyway, starting to come together a little bit there. This is after they moved all the forms around. They got them actually bolted to each other. And they have them down there uh, ready to bolt up. This is the end of some day. Just to, to show us so they were they're about getting to, to where they had a, 
uh, rectangle, but now a square. And you can see how much dirt is in the middle of this thing that's got to go away. I just had them dig a, a, a sidewalk around and take a work off of. I figured I'd worry about that dirt later. Still worrying about that dirt. Um, Bia, she's one of the brother's daughter. Uh, she's half of the bag-in crew. Uh, I thought it was Ace, but I think it's uh, Elijah is uh, shoveling for her. And I thought, from my understanding yesterday, somebody didn't get their 50 peso bonus for the uh, for a poor. We have an addition to the higher rate on a poor day. We have a 50 peso bonus on top of that. And uh, apparently uh, Mary didn't get a uh, bonus. She got her pay uh, before the end of the week. She needed the money. So uh, they hadn't poured yet, so the bonus wasn't uh, part of it yet. So, so when they poured the bonus, she'd already had the money, didn't get a, a, a bonus. So they asked if we could pay it. I said, sure, you can pay it. She earned it. You know, what's the problem with that? And I said, who's Mary? You know, because we, we added some people here and there, and, and uh, I don't think anything of it. You know, I don't care if, if they trust them and uh, they, they come to work. You know, uh, half the reason we're building this house is to give people employment. So we have a place to live. It's a nice concrete house. It's in town. I don't like that so much about it, but because it's so noisy. <clears throat> anyway, turns out they've been calling him uh, Rotu. Turned out Rotu is his nickname, and it's a he, and he can't spell uh, Marty. M-A-R-T-Y. So when they asked him for his name to send to the payroll, he said Mary, M-A-R-Y. So he turned to a she, and um, we're, we're tracking that through the, the paperwork now to get the name straightened out, but it's a guy. <laughs> That's not who B is working with, but I was thinking about putting uh, putting them together, uh, put the two girls together, at least they, they have something in common. But um, anyway, they bag it. And uh, one, two, three mix. There's some more. This edge up on the roof up here, we have to put a, a, a sculptured molding around that. And uh, this is just with the, the, the roughness of the forms. We just put some quarter inch plywood there to keep the cement from running on the ground. That's not anywhere near finished. But there's some skim coat we put on the bottom side of it, which we won't be changing. And we put concrete nails about uh, uh, seven centimeters apart, two rows, and the rows are staggered. And they're three-inch long concrete nails sticking out about three-quarters of an inch. And then we wrap tie wire from nail to nail up and down and diagonals and all kinds of stuff. And that holds the uh, molding to the house. Uh, you could put it over mildew and, and dirt and everything else. You stay right there. Anyway, oh, this is the gutter. That's... Uh, any water that runs off of the house uh, and runs down walls and stuff gets into this gutter. It looks deep, but it's only eight inches deep. And it's uh, only seven feet wide. I don't care what it looks like, it's seven feet wide. And all that water comes around and goes in the cistern. It also keeps mud from splashing up on the side of the house. You, know, you see every house in the Philippines is filthy. Uh, the bottom three feet is just mud running down the wall. Well, we haven't got that. You see, our walls are nice and white. Even this uh, this um, coat saver paint is still white. <clears throat> then you can see we when we went to digging just wide enough to work in, I'm sure a third of that dirt went to the center and another two-thirds went, you know, up on the hillside somewhere. But that's what it looks like before you pour it. We'll probably have a few more pictures of that. Uh, this is, I told him to show us all four walls. Uh, on this one, we sent back that uh, the wall wasn't straight. We needed to put some props against the top edge. Because <coughs> if it's not straight now, it won't get straighter on the next uh, lift. It'll be, you know, that way right on up it. Because the, the shape will just repeat. And they're showing another one that needs, uh, it's got uh, <coughs> a bit of a kink in it. But they'll fix that. As you'll see in a minute, because we poured it already. Eh. I think that was plastic that they just uh, 
had out for, uh, for sun cover while they were working. Also, you notice that there's concrete in this form. It's uh, full right to the top. All these verticals that are bent out of the way are just for working room, to, for walking around and uh, some place to put your foot and some place to pass a bucket of cement. And they're still putting concrete. Mixer's up on top of the hill up there. There's more working room here. <clears throat> this is that first uh, place they cleared out and when they were just uh, putting it in bags. Well, first they put it in buckets. And then they, they decided they needed to, to bag it because it kept running back in. So uh, they had dug one, that one that wide. The rest of them are just barely clear. Like that. Somebody's got to get down on that uh, outside and, and hold the boat. And somebody's got to reach on the inside and turn it. But they put them in. So it's, it's physically possible to get them out. Oh, this is the uh, fish pond. They're trying to find the concrete. Um, what they did was they pumped out uh, three feet of water with our third sump pump. <laughs> we have trouble with people keeping them immersed in the water. Uh, yeah, they're, they're water cooled, but the, there's oil cooled, but the oil transfers the heat to the case, and then the case is in water. That cools the motor. Uh, but I can't get that across to them. It's like running a gasoline engine. Uh, just turn the fuel off and let it run out of gas. I keep buying carburetors because that uh, uh, ethanol corrodes the uh, zinc in the carburetor and just plugs everything up. And it corrodes it so it's so stiff you can't take the pieces out. They break when you try to pull the pins out for the float and stuff. It just, the tabs just break off. You can soak them in WD-40 and yeah, you can soak them in muriatic acid, but they break about every other time you take. So there's 2,500 pesos per carburetor. Anyway, they pumped it and now they're scooping it with buckets to get the water out. And you see uh, along here, something that looks like a rope. Well, that's a rebar. That was tying the tops of all those... Uh, pieces that stick up and, and bend over, the wall anchors. <clears throat> that was getting them halfway straight while we poured the wall. And uh, they'll probably take that bar off because there's three more on the uh, forms. I'm not sure who those two are. This is probably Tissoy down here. Elijah. Same Same guy, different name we call him. And you can tell this is a pretty long tank. It's, uh, uh, well, not really, 25 feet. And it's probably uh, 10 or 12 wide. Um, this guy over here is five feet tall. This guy's bigger. I'm not sure what his name is. I think he's new since we left. We've really never lost the, the original crew. We just added to him. But I, I, I've never met that guy. And uh, we got pretty much all the water out, just uh, drying up. And it was, you know, it was three feet of water in there uh, the day before this was taken. Uh, orange hat, pink pants, that's Bia. And this is Elijah. He's doing the shovel for this bag. He's shoveling it into there, and then she drags it over here. Uh, she's usually on the... Uh, Bucket Brigade transferring concrete. Uh, she's usually on the ground. She doesn't pick up uh, from one level to another. She just transfers it when it's on the level. Uh, and the uh, Florence, uh, Florence pulled all the uh, the twenty columns in the house. I don't know, five hundred bags of concrete, uh, and she worked up on the top. And uh, Boy was running the uh, vibrator, so. Uh, she poured uh, all the concrete, you know, last one on the on the list. Pour it and sling the bucket out of the way. <laughs> um, Bia is a niece of the of the foreman, though that's not why she's hired. She's hired because she's a good worker, and she's related to everybody. And they joke around, you know. They they have a good time at work. Uh, this is the fish pond again. You can start to see all the uh, rebars that's going to anchor the walls. So it's well over twice as long as it is wide, and it's about 10 feet wide. 
And that's the dirt they have to get rid of yet. And they're still working on that. <clears throat> Apparently they're, they're working down this side over here, making it a, a wider sidewalk on the, uh, on the right side. We have daily uh, updates on some of this. Oh, okay. They poured the first ring at this point of the cistern. I told them, while it's only four feet high and you need dirt on the other wall, uh, on the other side of the wall, take the outside form off and just set it up on your heel side and sling the dirt over the wall. We'll brush it off when we slip the forms up. Uh, but before you put the extra horizontal bars in, just take one or two days, let this concrete set uh, longer before we bolt something to it and just shovel it up and throw it over the wall. <clears throat> so we spent about three days on that, and then it was time to put on forms, so that doesn't work anymore. And uh, this is an early attempt at putting the forms up. You notice that they've got a, a plastic bag stuffed in here. Uh, that won't be in there. These, these floors are flat. Uh, and the forms are perfectly square because they're whole sheets, and or or a sheet with one end cut off, you know. So once they get get going better, then this bag won't be there in any uh, later pictures. And this is the shoveling dirt. And it's Benji again. Same hat. You can always tell him from the hat. And you can see the, the forms are four feet tall, so he's over five feet. He's probably five foot two. Uh, this is with them throwing the, uh, the dirt over the back. Now, you can only come up five inches from the top of the concrete because the next form will be there when you bolt it on that they overlap. Uh, just more, more dirt being shoveled over. This is with the second lift of forms uh, uh, bolted up on at least two walls. You got the horizontal rebars added, and this, they lifted the form. They call it a slip form because you just take the form and slip it up the wall. They built grain elevators, uh, you know, 120 feet tall this way. Um, we're only going up four feet. The forms are fairly lightweight, uh, and we wipe them down with... Uh, we missed them with WD-40 and then take a paper towel or rag and rub it all over them, and they just fall off. Now, Texas 